Over the past 24 hours, the Ukrainian armed forces have continued to carry out offensive actions. The attacks were launched near several villages around the town of Bakhmut, where there has been a violent stalemate for months. The Russian attack on Bakhmut was spearheaded largely by Wagner Group mercenaries. Footage has emerged showing Ukrainian troops taking over a kilometer-long Russian trench in the Bakhmut area. According to the ministry's latest intelligence update, there is little evidence that Russia maintains significant operational-grade ground force reserves that could be used to reinforce the multiple threats it now faces in widely separated sectors. The sectors stretch from Bakhmut to the east bank of the Dnipro River, more than 200 kilometers away. Video footage shows the Ukrainian armed forces continuing to crush the Russian invaders along the front line, including in Zaporizhia. Recent fighting on the left bank of the Dnieper near the bridge over the Konka River. For some reason, the Russian invaders armored personnel carrier drove up to the bridge and judging by everything, will remain there for a long time. Konka is a river in the Zaporizhia region of Ukraine. It flows into the Kakov Reservoir. Another video shows gunners of the Ukrainian armed forces destroying the Russian invaders' 203mm self-propelled gun 2S7 pawn with a 155mm artillery projectile. People's Deputy and Frontline Volunteer Yuri Mysigin announced this today on his page on the social network Twitter, publishing a corresponding video. Our defenders walk around the destroyed Piani and tell us that it is very rare equipment. It is not known exactly when and where the ACS was destroyed. However, it can be assumed that there was a direct hit. President Volodymyr Zelensky said Ukrainian troops had made progress on all fronts. The statement follows his visit to the front lines in the Donetsk region on Monday. Ukraine's military said separately that Russia was focusing its efforts on eastern cities. Zelensky also directly called on the Russian people to abandon the war against their nation after the attempted coup by the Wagner Group threatened Vladimir Putin's grip on power. In a speech as Wagner's army of mercenaries marched towards Moscow, the Ukrainian leader warned that keeping Putin in the Kremlin would only lead to more disaster. Ukraine's summer counteroffensive was buoyed by chaos in Russia caused by a mercenary mutiny and made steady tactical advances. The Ukrainian armed forces broke through the first line of defense of the Russian invaders in the Solodar direction, in the area of the free frontline villages of Vesel and Rozdalivka, and advanced to occupy Gakovlivka. This was reported by the Telegram channel Operative Donbas citing Western English-speaking military experts and OSINT researchers. Our defender, who fights in the direction of Bakhmut and runs the Telegram channel Peredovich Zirok, confirmed this event. Work is being carried out from the other side towards the city of Solodar, and progress has also been recorded there. Meanwhile, Wagner's mercenaries returned to their base on Sunday after Putin agreed to allow their leader to avoid treason charges and accept exile in Belarus. Vladimir Putin has appeared outside in the Kremlin to tell members of Russia's security services that they essentially prevented a civil war during Yevgeny Prigozhin's armed uprising, when a jet linked to leader Wagner flew into Belarus from Russia. The people and the army are not on the side of the rebels, the Russian president told the heads of Russia's main domestic security service and defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, whom Prigozhin wanted to remove with his rebellion in the Kremlin. Putin then announced a minute's silence for the army pilots who were shot down and killed by Wagner during their uprising. There is no official information yet on how many pilots died or how many planes were shot down, but several pro-military bloggers report that at least 13 pilots died in the mutiny. The Ukrainian armed forces liquidated and injured nearly three companies of Russian invaders in recent days in the Tavri region. Ukraine has also destroyed 16 invaders' vehicles. Ukrainian missile and artillery units have launched 1,093 firing missions. 
Oleksandr Tarnavsky, commander of the Tavria Strategic Operational Forces Group, reported this on his Telegram channel. The general staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces reported on June 27 that Russia had lost 226,170 troops in Ukraine since the start of its full-scale invasion on February 24 last year. This number includes the 590 casualties suffered by Russian forces over the past few days. Russia's Federal Security Service said on Tuesday it would drop the case against the Wagner fighter. It has been established that its participants stopped their actions that were directly aimed at committing a crime. The case is closed, he said. The Russian Defense Ministry said Wagner would also transfer its heavy military equipment to Russia's active military units. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malyar said that Ukrainian troops had regained control of Rivnopol, a village to the west of a cluster of settlements that was recaptured during the offensive operation. The village appears to be the ninth the Ukrainians have recaptured this month. Ukraine says it has made progress since launching the counteroffensive, but Russian troops still control large parts of Ukraine after their invasion in February 2022. Wagner mercenary boss Yevgeny Prigozhin, for weeks, if not months, argued that Russia's war in Ukraine was being fought badly and unnecessarily by an elite who didn't care how many Russian lives were lost. Prigozhin strikes out with his charismatic rant and carefully choreographed from Bakhmut, in which hundreds of his fighters are dying so that Putin can claim a small advantage in his painfully slow war in Ukraine. Prigozhin claimed his troops were short on ammunition by one of Putin's inner circle, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoyu. The Wagner boss, obvious hatred of Shoyu, has developed into a simmering turf war over who will control Wagner. At stake is the mega-money-making venture Prigozhin is developing and owning for the Kremlin in Africa and beyond.